Well, all good things must come to an end, and our coverage of the state championships is wrapping up. This is the Charles River State Recap Show. Patrick Hamler, Mark Schein, Danny Holbrook here with you, and what a finals it has been so far. Two state championships in the book as a time we are doing this. Two more to be decided later on tonight, and we are focusing in on Ottawa Glandorf looking for another state championship, matching up with Cincinnati Taft. And there were some people who thought that this might not be that competitive a matchup. It was going to be Taft's all the way, but Ottawa Glandorf hung with them and I think was competitive. And I don't think we were surprised by that so much. We feared the Titans would be ready to play. Well, I would agree with that, Patrick. And they were right there. That second quarter is a huge momentum swing. Titans' first five possessions, they score 10 points. And then we get the injury. And everybody kind of lays around for about five minutes. We fortunately they got back on the floor, healthy eventually. But then, at that point, particular point in time, Taft goes on. Uh, 10 points or 10 possessions, 17 points. They won, got back in the basketball game, kind of changed things around. We'll have highlights and reaction from that coming up here in just a little bit. And talking about uh, momentum, that was one of the things that uh, Coach Tice McLaughlin mentioned in the post game was that things were starting to go Ottawa Glandorf's way. They struggled a bit in the first quarter, and then that kind of slowed everything down and really uh, stalled the game out for them a little bit. And uh, it was a, it seemed like it was a pretty key point for OG at that point in time. It was something that McLaughlin mentioned in his post game. Yeah, it was. And you look at the stats, and they were so similar on both sides of the ball. And and it was such a such an evenly matched game that a play here, a play there, and that kind of thing right there. You talked about that that momentum shift. But Ottawa Glendorf played a great game today. The athleticism and the speed of Taft was was I think was the difference. But but give credit to the kids from Ottawa Glendorf. Played their hearts out and just came up short. And and, and unfortunately, it's in the state championship game. Well, let's take a look at the highlights in this one. Ottawa Glendorf looking for their fourth state championship in school history and they would get rolling in this one Colin White leading the Titans into the championship and a championship Sunday here in Dayton OG getting their first field goal Hunter Steckschulte hitting the corner three getting the scoring started for OG in this one then later on it's gonna be Theo Meg driving laying it in tying the game at eight but OG struggled from the field only two for 13 in the first quarter yeah that's true you see Meg using the left hand I thought young man grew up a lot this week and he did that twice for baskets in the game Eli Schmink with the drive and score ties this one up uh, using the foul line to stay close in this one. Now Caleb Coleman driving and scoring OG with a three point lead. Only six minutes to go in the second quarter here at this point. How about this score from Carter Schimmler adding to that lead, hitting the floating jump shot here. A six point lead for them and then Colin White. We'll see him again driving and dunking, throwing that down. 55% shooting in the second quarter from them. And here's what I love about covering Ottawa Glendorf. You have to learn everybody's name because they get so many contributions from so many players. Schimmler and Schmank and, and White and Coleman. And everybody contributes on this team. You, you know, Patrick, that dunk we just saw right there, I, I've been coming to the whole of State Tournament basketball games. And when that guy threw that ball down over two other players who are much taller than he is, that was an incredibly impressive performance. Definitely part of the momentum. Uh, getting in there and in Theo Mag now this is a white nice pull-up jumper again OG in the third quarter with the lead then Schmink corner three part of his eight giving OG the 32 31 lead you know what's interesting about that in the first quarter he put wrap on his right on his left hand his shooting hand because he had a floor bird or something on it he went to the basket three times with his right hand to score and then had to be able to stick a three ball in his left hand right there it shows his versatility a lot from Cincinnati Taff Rayvon Griffith hitting the huge three to tie a part of his 12 points on the afternoon. Later, White hitting a tough shot down low to tie this one up at 36. Both teams having leads of five or six points, but it was very close all the way through. White, you've seen him do a lot of work getting the hoop and the harm, tying it up at 40 at this point. He does a great job of getting to the basket and creating contact. He knows exactly where his teammates are when he can't get to the basket. And I said that earlier, he finds the open teammate when he's taken out of the picture, and he does a great job of that. Ian Elmore for Cincinnati, Taft throwing it down giving them a 46-40 lead, only 2.45 to go, but Ottawa Glandorf showing up with some nice defense and offense as well. White with the finish and the drive, making it 45, 48-45 tap. Then six seconds left, OG with a chance. White, corner to three. That one is off, rebounded by Taft. You think the game's over, that's it. Travel called. They get an opportunity here. OG gets one more shot at it. White, corner to three again. This time it does not fall. Cincinnati Taft wraps up their second state championship, two for two in state title games. They come away with the 48-45 win, and you had to like those last two sequences. The shot didn't go in, but you had to like those last two sequences. The, the, the first shot that we saw right there, that's the same play they ran to beat Harvest Prep in their game they had up in January up at their particular place. He ran it all the way to the corner that time to get to corner three. Look, he got a great look. 
you know, just didn't go down for him. Then they got another shot to buzzer, and again, just just tough luck. And I felt like it was a lot of what ifs, you know, Patrick, because what if the, the you know the injury doesn't happen, the momentum doesn't stop. What if, and this is a, a big one, what if the officials call the technical on all the kids that ran on the floor before the game was over? There was a whole bunch yeah. of cheerleaders, and I'm not saying that decided the game, but you know, what if? And listen, if I got a chance to have. White take two shots to win the game for me. I'm going to do it every time. And you know, Patrick, along with that, I thought the officials showed great uh, uh, courage to make that travel call. I can understand not the bench call sure, like you're sure. talking about. I can understand it, but to make that call right there, that took some courage on the officials' part. We'll talk a little bit about this a little bit more later on. Right now, uh, we'll take you to some comments from head coach Seth McLaughlin. First off, bear with me. It started yesterday. The old voice started to go, but. <clears throat> um, just what a phenomenal game, you know, that's what a, as, as a kid, as a, as a kid, you know, and especially, I mean everywhere, but especially in Putnam County and in the OG communities, you dream about playing for a state championship. Um, the, a lot of the times it's your neighbor, your brother, your uncle, you know, has one, been to state, you want those bragging rights. And for these guys to come together this year, when I knew the expectations were going to be, were, were going to be strong, uh, but we lost some really good players from last year. And uh, this group really gelled together. And probably there's the only one other team that I can think of where day in and day out, we had so much fun. And uh, we've got great kids, but for whatever reason, this group, came to practice every day ready to go. They came ready to fight. They came ready to scratch, claw, whatever it took, because we're not very big. Um, but you can't, you can't measure their heart. And uh, I just thought this was a heavyweight fight. You couldn't ask for a better atmosphere. So proud of the OG communities and uh, all of Putnam County, Northwest Ohio that rallied behind us. Um, you know, unfortunately, we fell, we fell a little short to just a really, really good basketball team. Oh, there's a little disparency out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh. You know, fortunately for us, <clears throat> um, we thought Afrocentric played kind of a similar style. They had some of that similar length, just not probably the, the, the strength, the strength um, uh, that, that Taft had. Uh, so we tried to keep a lot of those principles the same because we just didn't have time to really, you know, you're limited. Um, we tried to treat Swain, or Swain from Afrocentric, I should say. Griffith from Taft, similar to we guarded uh, Swain from Afrocentric, and we tried to keep some of those same principles away from the ball, and, and probably gave a little bit more help inside to, to kind of push them, almost dare them to shoot from the perimeter, because we just knew the size discrepancy down there was going to be was going to be a battle and, and something that wasn't in our favor. We were concerned about foul trouble um, with that size, so you know I, I thought our guys did a good job. Came in yesterday at the Dayton Christian and had a really good practice and tweaked a couple things, but. You know, in a short turnaround, and I go to reinvent the wheel. You know, I just thought our guys came out there and executed as well as they could. You just called it a heavyweight fight, and there were only 15 fouls called the whole game. Obviously, that hurt you more than it hurt them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, it's it's the game's kind of changing a little bit. It's a little bit more physical. Uh, I think uh, you know this guy's going to be leaving me. All right, he's going to go do great things. This guy's going to look comp completely different next year. Uh, when you see him play, this guy's going to fill out, and you know that's really a point of emphasis for our guys right now is to to really get in that weight room, and we're going to change some things there, and uh, because the physicality is there, and you know it was both ways. You know we we press and foul and scrap. Like I said, we got to do all those things to compete at this level. I mean, so um, it was one of those things you got to be able to adjust. And I thought our guys did, you know, for the most part, and uh, you know it was just a couple of little runs there that you know, fortunately, against a really good team like that, you can't have. How well, you know, it, it, to me, it wasn't the pressure is very, very good. And they, they got length on the on the wings there. You got a top twenty-five player in the country. You know, guarding you know Colin and trying to make things tough on him. But you know, you got the length on the wings, making it tough for our wings to get open, and, and all the ball pressure that they're putting on. But then when you get do get by that first wave of people, you're running into six, eight, two forty. I don't know how big he is. He's a big boy. That's a big freshman. And then, then you got another, you know, six six, lots of length, you know. So you know, it's it's not just the initial pressure; it's that second line. When we did get by, we went up and tried to go through contact, and you know, they kind of bumped the sophomore line. Coach, the second guys, I thought your your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, games basketball is a game of momentum, you know, and, and then you 
you throw an injury in there, and you know he landed hard. Uh, you never want to see that in, in a game. You want to play against their best, and that's what we want to do. We don't we don't want anybody to go down with an injury. I'm glad to see him get up and you know come right back in. But um, you know we had the momentum <laughs> definitely, and uh, you, between that and you know the first time for us playing the TV timeouts, there was a TV timeout kind of right after that as well. That, well, I think that led into the TV timeout, um, but. Like I said, they're really good. They're really good. They make some timely shots. That three at the end of the first half was, that three at the end of the first half was huge. And uh, I tried to switch at the very end to a two, two or two, three zone to give them a little different look, try to get the formation a little bit different. But uh, I was late on the call and gave me a really good play. It happened one of the first plays of the game. Coach told us before the, when we were in the locker, he said, You're, this game's going to come down to some blood on the floor, scrapes on the hands and knees and stuff. And, he was right. One of the first plays that happened. Uh, at first, it bothered me a little bit, but then towards the end, I just forgot about it. Absolutely. You know, uh, I told you guys in the locker room, outside of our locker room and our true uh, core of fans, I'm not many. I'm not sure many people gave us a chance to compete with Taft, and that's that's no disrespect. I get it. I mean, they got athletes and size all over the floor, but. This isn't our first rodeo, and our guys have competed in these types of games and these types of tournaments, you know, many, many times. We just knew we had to weather the storm. I can't say enough about these guys and how important it is. Eli practiced one day this week. Carter Schindler practiced one day this week, both under the weather, not feeling good, not feeling good at all. To, to be able to come out and put this type of effort against that caliber of team, I think it shows what it means to our guys. And, and it's going to be motivation for this man in the future and our other guys in there. And you look at the three, 4,000 people that we, that we brought to the game today, those little kids, you know, they're dreaming about being these guys. And I think that's what separates. I, when we come home and, you know, there's 1,000 people out on the streets greeting these guys, you're going to see just as many kids out on the basketball hoops out there, you know, simulating and emulating these guys. And we tell our guys all the time, you know, it's a fraternity. You leave, you go away for a little bit, but they'll still be there. And uh, I'm just, just beyond grateful for the support that we get and the way our kids handle themselves because they're, they're class acts on and off the court. All right, everyone good? Appreciate you guys. After the press conference, we were able to catch up with Tice McLaughlin and Colin White. You know, I thought we did a really good job of doing what we do, and we, we did a pretty good job of attacking the rim and getting space. Their size and athleticism is something, you know, we can't simulate. Um, they were able to not only put pressure on us on the perimeter, but I thought that second line is probably what gave us the most problems. As the game went on, we got past, and we were able to get matchups to, to get our guys typically where they're successful. Um, when you go into 6'8", 6'6", six, six, behind that with, with size and strength, uh, we had a trouble We had trouble finishing in there. And, uh, you know, that's why they're the state champs. They're really, really good. They're really talented. But it wasn't due to a lack of effort. Our guys played extremely hard. They did everything that a coach could ask them to do. And, you know, for that, I'll be forever grateful. Yeah, we told them. You know, our, our goal was be within five on the rebounding and uh, 12 or less turnovers. And we thought if we did that, we would, we'd be there in the fourth quarter. And that's what we wanted. We wanted, a, you know, that last four minutes of the game to be right there and, you know, allow our crowd to get involved. And, you know, it, and they were they were phenomenal. Our guys were phenomenal. Um, you know, we just had a couple turnovers that led to points that were kind of backbreakers. And, uh, you know, we, we they had to play flawless, but we knew we had to play really, really good. And uh, we gave them a couple opportunities late, and they capitalized. I don't know if I've had more fun. I, I really, do, I really don't, and and I never. I, they'd probably disagree, and they would say something different. But I can only really remember raising the voice and really going at him a couple times this year. And you know that's kind of uncommon in our in our in our practices and you know games and things like that. But they always came with the right approach, and they always came uh, with that next man mentality. Colin, you know, is going to get you know 20 a game and gets all kinds of recognitions, recognition. But the other guys, you know, we got you know six guys basically from you know six points to nine points, ten points, and it was just a different guy each time. So they didn't care about the playing time. We switched our starting lineups, you know, throughout the year. You know, I just. It was just a lot of fun to be around them. Um, they didn't get too worried, you know, the highs weren't too high and the lows weren't too low. And, you know, that's a credit to, to those seniors and it's definitely going to be a group that's going to be really hard to replace. Yeah, our guys, you know, they laid it all on the court. You know, they everything they did was, you know, for the, for the team and different guys at different times. And, you know, we talked to guy, talked a lot about being the first ones on the floor and we were the first ones on the floor. And kind of came back to haunt us on that, you know, little possession there. And, you know, when you're, 
the game's at a, points are at a premium and it's back and forth. We needed to be able to capitalize on those turnovers and steals. And you know, you got to give credit to Taft. I, I, they're as athletic and as as talented as as we've seen. And I thought they shot the ball pretty well. We had, we did a pretty good job of forcing them to contest shots. And uh, Griffith made a couple big ones. And then 23 was he was kind of the difference maker. I just want to do it one time. I don't know. <laughs> just you know, he's just so explosive. You know, he's a, he works really hard at his game, and I think he's just scratching the surface of of where he's at. You know, he's a three sport guy, and you know, when when he starts, you know, really that body starts to change. You're gonna be watching him. You know, you're gonna be watching him on you know TV every night, and you know, he, but he carried the balls out of practice yesterday. He, you know, he. he chills with my little son and you know talks to the guys I mean he's just a humble kid that loves to play basketball and you know he's really a you know product of you know some great parents and great culture around our around our communities and you know to be the face of the program and to handle himself the way he does I think it speaks volumes for a lot of different things you can you know it, it hurts right now it really does but you know just being in the locker room after the game you're just thinking like oh like you could have done this you could have done that but uh sooner or later it'll set in like that was a really good season that was a really good game we just played and uh Hopefully it's just a fuel for next year. You know, I, I thought uh, they were really overplaying on screen, so I couldn't take it and uh, get to my pull-up jumper. So uh, it was a play, and uh, I kind of just jabbed and saw an open lane and just finished, you know. You know, you, you got to finish through contact in this game. So there wasn't anyone that was going to stop me there because you know, I had my mindset that this one's going down. It really was. You know, our seniors really stepped up today. Uh, Theo Mag played pretty good. and. Uh, Caleb Kuman and Carter and Eli, they're all steady, steady players. They come every day ready to play. And, uh, you know, the, they were really clogging the lane today. I couldn't get through. And uh, Rayvon with his uh, length, I couldn't get any jumpers off. So uh, my teammates really stepped up. All right, welcome back. First of all, I want to thank Mark Coons for helping us out with that last segment, getting uh, catching up with Tyson McLaughlin and Colin White. But one of the things you guys were mentioning, and well, something else I want to touch on as well, uh, Tyson McLaughlin in the press conference talked about the physicality of the games. And every game that we've seen down here in Dayton has had that, that physical aspect of it. The refs have swallowed the whistle for the most part. There have only been calls, it seems like, um, unless there was something really egregious, they didn't call them. And... Tyson mentioned that, like the, the physicality of the game was something that was impactful, and I think on both sides. Well, I think there were three plays. One, uh, in, that, in that mode that uh, Schmink went to the basket, didn't get a call. White went to the basket, didn't get a call. And then the goal 10 was or not, wasn't it? I'm not saying they were wrong calls, but neither one of those three calls went in favor of OG, and that was probably part of the game right there. And I felt like Taft's game plan was to come out and really body up on Colin White. And he tried to get to the middle a few times, and I felt like it forced him back into the perimeter. Now, I take away the dunk. He didn't really get to the rim a lot. He had to take a lot of perimeter shots, a lot of outside jumpers. And I felt like Taft's defense really dictated his game today. There was a lot of defensive plays throughout the game, it seemed like. OG had some pretty uh, – low shooting percentages first quarter fourth quarter I think they shot 25 percent in the first quarter they shot 30 percent in the fourth quarter however they kept Taft from scoring for the last two minutes of the contest so OG for in a lot of ways even though they struggled shooting in the first and fourth quarters the last two three minutes of the game laid themselves out really well where the Titans had what I felt like was a legitimate chance to tie even pull this one out absolutely Patrick and they, they did defend well during those particular segments but here's what else happened they're down six and Carson Fuqua makes a big three you know, that cut it to three yeah, right there. That was a huge shot that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Huge shot by that young man. Yeah, and and just the we talked about it, and I know we've at, at a, you know the physicality of the play. And we said this earlier, the guys I was sitting around. It's almost like the state came out and told the referees, let them play, let them be physical. You know, I don't know that they did that, but it seemed like my goodness, I've been at state tournaments now for thirty some years, and I've never seen it this rough. And unfortunately, you know, our, our area team suffered because of it. And it's interesting just to hear the the crowds, the student section. You know, you're it's a it's a championship game, it's a semifinal, so everyone's amped, everybody's into it. But it seems that, and this is going back to our coverage of the girls' state semifinals and championships last week. It seemed that the officials, as you said, were more willing to just kind of let the guys play. Um, is that something that you prefer watching as a as a coach, whoever, or would you? Would you rather they're a little maybe closer to the rule book to hear some of the fans out there as they might have called it? Well, I, okay, I'm going to look at it this way. <laughs> okay. go, go for it, Mark. Yeah. Go for it. I, I like a free-flowing game. I, I want the game to go up and down the floor. I, I like a free-flowing game, but it was called the same way 
for both teams. I think you got to live with that. Oh, I, I completely agree. Every game was called just like that. Every game was every game we've watched this weekend has been very, very physical. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think that as long as you're consistent with it, and number exactly. two, don't don't change it up in the last two minutes, 90 right. seconds of the game. Like if you're if you're, if you're allowing a little contact, yeah, right. allow that contact in the last 10 seconds of the game as well. Yeah, I would agree with that. And let's put it this way: Ottawa Glendorf, they're a physical basketball team. Maybe against this team, who was a more physical basketball team, it doesn't show up as much, but they know how to play through contact like that. And you really saw, again, touching on the defensive aspect of it, because there's so much offense that gets credit. You know, um, 18 points from Colin White. He had 31 points in the state semifinal. Both these teams average 65 and almost 70 points, respectively, for Ottawa Glendorf and Cincinnati Tap. Both teams way down below those averages. And you look at the, the defense really showed up for, for both of these schools today. Yeah, and you talk about, as a, as a former coach, defense travels. And if your offense isn't working, defense travels. And, and it's so right. Defense does win championships. And you saw it today, and you've seen it in every game. The defensive stalwarts are stopping the offense, and they're winning games. It was interesting to overhear one of the comments from the Cincinnati, someone who was involved with Cincinnati Taft. I don't know exactly who it was. And they left the press conference, and I overheard them say, man, let's wait until we leave the press conference before we start talking about back-to-back. <laughs> the comments for can Cincinnati Tap do this again start very quickly. But looking over the Ottawa Glandorf side, you have to feel pretty good. Colin White coming back. You've got a lot of young talent there. I'm not saying do we discuss them getting back here this time <laughs> next year. But if you're a Titan fan, you've got to feel good about your chances heading into next season with how good a team you're going to have. Well, we just had this conversation a few minutes ago on WMA Radio uh, with Alex Wolf and myself. You know, they do. they got players coming back. And with the tradition of their school and with their junior high programs and JV programs, yes, you're going to say this is going to be a very good basketball team, but you got to have a lot of things fall your way to get to the state tournament. Yeah, and, and I'm glad Taft thinks that way, and that's great. But I can tell you this. If they win a back-to-back -back state tournament, I'm pretty sure they're going to have to go through Ottawa Glendorf because there's a lot of talent right there. And, and once Tyson McLaughlin and his staff learns what they have to learn to play against a physical team like that, they'll, they'll put it in the book. <laughs> and in Northwest Ohio, and, and I could say this, I've covered sports in other parts of the state, the, the idea that you would just assume that you're going to be back here next year, that you're going to have a good team next year, and be able to compete at the same level next year is so taken for granted. And this nothing is Ottawa Glandorf or anyone in particular. I'm not saying that at all. But a lot of schools just do not repeat. We just watched St. Vincent St. Mary's celebrate their 10th state championship, more than anybody else in the state of Ohio. Schools coming back over and over again is a rarity. So you, you have to appreciate that. So we had a team like Antwerp, who's this is the first time they've been here. Will they be back? I don't know. You know, we don't want to get too far into the prognostication, but it's not something that happens very often for a lot of fan bases. This is Centerville, who's the defending state champion Division One, we're going to see later this evening. They had to make a three in the regionals to win by two to get out of the regionals. It, it's just that difficult to do. You got to be good. You got to be well coached. You got to have a good fan base. And then you got to get some things go your way also. Yeah, and basketball junkies like us, when we see a team like Antwerp make that trip down here and they pack this place and the community goes crazy, you just treasure that because you're right, Patrick. You don't know when you're going to get back here. You may get back here next year, and you may get back here in 30 years. You know, the high school I went to, we've been here one time since our existence, and we treasure that, you know. So, yeah, it's to say it's back-to-back, -back, nah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. New Philadelphia, 82 years and counting. <laughs> but we were undefeated in 1940. We're going to hang on to that. First ever undefeated team to win the state title. That's it. That's it. I'm done talking about New Philadelphia. <laughs> that is going to wrap up our coverage of the Charles River State Recap. Before we go, I want to thank some folks behind the scenes who made all this happen. Ben Reif, Zach Keith, Ryan Shadowall, helping us out a ton with making sure that we look good and sound good. Also want to give a special thanks to Mark Kuntz helping us out. Uh, with some of the highlights as well. Ben Rice back there going, I don't know about the look good, sound good <laughs> part of it, but you did you did the best you could, and we appreciate He's excited because Tri-Village is here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in happy Patriot land knowing Tri-Village <laughs> might win a, uh, a state title or lose to Richmond Heights. We really don't know how that's going to go. Any, anything is possible to him who believes. That is going to wrap up our state recap coverage. Mark Schein, Danny Holbrook, gentlemen, thank uh, you so much for helping us out. I'm Patrick Candler. Enjoy the rest of your night, and it has been a blast bringing you state basketball coverage. We'll see you next time on WOSN. Good night.